her number, Lena's phone number, and it will be on the Get Lucky page. But for anyone that wants the prana and, um, healing, her number is 650-823-4953. That number again is 650-823-4953. And so we'll jump in and we'll um, start. Dr. Marga, what a joy. It's what a joy you are. And I think I keep hitting mute at the same time. Thank you so much for what you bring and all of your experience and all the ways that you give. And um, the energy around you, around this new moon, is so full. And it's, um, it, it's like the carcass of 2018 and everything that was before is completely gone. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> it was a rough year. <laughs> It was so, so beautiful. And it's so funny because there's an energy of remembering things that are, that, that's around you that's so profound. And that uh, memory, that remembering is so beautiful. Is there anything I can answer for you right now? Uh, what's the most important thing that I need to know moving forward, you know, this year? Um, so it's so beautiful. The most important thing is God and you have laid out so many tracks for yourself. There's like, there's five open um, different possibilities of the life that you're leading. And it's interesting because it feels like Mother Mary's energy has been uh, like embodiment of Mother Mary, even the music like um, Mother Mary will come to you has been showing itself to you. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Yes, I feel more connections and, and downloads and, and um, remote uh, you know, feelings or tapping into people when I listen to prayer in, in, in the music form. In the music, and it's like Mother Mary's coming through into that in prayer. And so um, there... The, the most important thing is to really feel that you are being embraced and loved by her. She's got you. And over and over again, what, what the prayers are bringing is this deep connection. And it's a very juicy love story that's being hatched in the process and so it's really important to um and when i say there's like the five different paths to really really understand yesterday all of that everything's gone and everything's reforming itself in a new manner now and so it this is the most important thing is to feel that you're being held by mother mary and to only share about the vision and your bliss list, your happiness list, what makes you happy, the bliss list. That's gonna that make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to really draw on that energy and that, and over and over and over again, it's remembering gosh, you have gone through some of the toughest stuff and you have come out so beautifully from it. You learn from every lesson that you go through. So I have no regrets for what I went through because they all taught me very valuable lessons that made me as strong as I am right now. Yeah, And that I can share with people. So that's the most exciting things. The more I learn, I mean, the harder I fall, the more I learn, and the more I learn, the more I can be of help to others too. Yeah, it's, it's so, so lovely. Thank you, love. Thank and you. Um, I, I'm so excited. Just thank you so much for saying yes to meeting with Miracle Makers and that whole experience. I'm so excited for everyone to experience you. It's my pleasure. 
Yay. Bye for now. And I think, I wonder if Mary Beth is still here. Hi, love. Yes, I am. Hi. Yay. I heard you guys talking when I was downstairs, so I knew you guys were, I'm so glad, uh, so beautiful. What can I answer for you? I don't know. I liked Marga's question. Um, what's the most important thing I need to know for this year? Oh, gosh. That's, it's such a juicy year for you as well. And it's, um, there's an energy of unstuckness. And it's the uh, like, and it's the opposite of freedom. Like there is a complete freedom, and so part of you is washing off unstuck. Um, and so uh, I want to share that another way, which is so beautiful that you're helping a lot of people get unstuck, not just yourself. And so when there's waves of energy coming over you that feel like, oh, I might be stuck or this is the only possibility, there's, I want you to think of all the ways that you're free. This is the most free you've ever been. And by the end of 2019, what you've opened up for yourself is this amazing deeper levels of freedom it's more beautiful than so but um that going back and forth between feeling unstuck right there's this feeling you know you're not stuck but you're like oh yeah I, i'm not stuck and this absolute freedom and there's a great deal of playful energy that's coming through in your field. Like you're going to be playing. Um, and in everything that you do, there's that element of play coming forward. Nice. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> you're so welcome. And it's so beautiful because you know yourself better than ever. Yes. Like you're noticing the nuances. And so yes. you're able to really like strike it out of the ballpark with everything that you're doing. And so there's, um, there's love in your horizon as well. And it's, it's sort of funny because there's a push pull with you that I'm stuck and freedom about it uh -huh. in the love area. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it feels good really around February as well. And then it feels like in October, there's a huge financial upgrade. Nice. I like that. <laughs> it's beautiful. That's what's in, that's probably the most important thing. And what was the February? It's, it's around love. Mm -hmm. It's really like being unstuck at least by February, really being in freedom. So it's the most playful you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. You're so welcome, love. Yay. Let's see. Janice, we'll jump back to you. Hi, love. So what can I answer for you? Is there a particular question? Okay, so now I'm unmuted. Yes. So this year I'm studying acupuncture. Awesome. And I have three board exams that I need to take and my school doesn't really teach the exam so it's stuff I've been teaching myself and I just really feel like um, I don't know when do you think is a good time to take the first test I'm taking the hardest one first oh uh, very smart so um, your field is saying focus on the questions you have like a set of questions that are the hardest right uh -huh. focus on when you're self-testing okay your focus has to be self-testing i'm going to say this another way they want you to think a particular way to answer okay. the question 
And okay. you're, you think outside the box, which is really great. You see a whole picture on a regular basis. And so you've got to line up why you picked the wrong answer. Okay. So that you can always pick the right answer. Okay. So if you take a question with like answers from A to F, right? Right. So the correct answer might have been B. You've got to look at why A was wrong, C was wrong, D was wrong, E was wrong, F was wrong. I'm, I'm teaching you how your mind thinks for yourself. Okay. When you see why it was wrong, you can choose the right answer all the time. Okay. And so that's a big one for you. Yeah, because I have so many books and there's so many resources to study. And I just find myself reading and reading. But I also am subscribed to a website where there's test questions. Yes. And so oh my literally God. write down in a notebook why uh -huh. were wrong. Okay. And why it's wrong. Why it's wrong. And most of my classmates, I'm far away. I'm like two hours away from my school. And I just commute in once a month when classes are. So I'm kind of on my own. And um, one person I was studying with, he already passed all of his board exams. And so there's nobody to study with online. Do you think I need to find a new person or do you think I'm better off just doing these test questions by myself? I think that's probably why it's coming up this way. You're becoming your own partner. Um, so instead of studying with someone else and teaching each other, you're teaching yourself why you were wrong. So you're the mirror. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't mean you need to find anyone else. And it feels like um, it's crazy because six weeks seems like the ideal time for you to scan out and study about six weeks for each test. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, that sounds about right. So we're looking at end of February for the first one. Yes. Yeah, I kind of thought that. And then I can do like what we're doing now with Zoom and then share the questions on the screen maybe with another student. Right, and I think that's a great idea. And the, the thing that you wanna do is find the people that took the test and interview them and ask them what questions they remember. Oh yeah, I've, I've done that a lot. Yeah, and so that's that, pretty good, yeah. So, um, spending and offering yourself to really help quiz someone on their notes. Okay. So say, listen, if you want me to quiz you out loud um, as the final getting ready for your test, I'm happy to quiz you. So it wind up being a lot of different people that you study with right before okay. the test. On okay. So I'm asking people who've already taken the test. So, so how many people are left within your program to take the test? Oh, maybe like, maybe like eight people or 10 people. Eight or 10. So you go through maybe 20 questions a day and you, you write out why the answers were wrong. And you um, say, listen, I am happy to quiz you on to see if you're ready and to engage to just help you get ready for the last parts of the test. Okay. Put it on Zoom. I've got these questions that I'm working on and you work on 20 questions a day. And if you can do more, you do more. But it, there's like a lot of correct and incorrect answers. Is that correct? That's right, yes. So it goes from like A to Z, for example. It doesn't really, but it's really extended. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of wrong answers. And you can really share with people as, like, as they come up with the question, you, your explanation of why it's right or wrong really helps them. 
and as a result the the end goal is they give you the questions that they had on the exam okay because i've talked to a number of people who've already taken the exam and they've told me what's on it or what yeah. i mean the question bank i'm sure is like a thousand ten thousand questions so just because they had a question doesn't mean i'm going to get the question right and it's, it's a bank of questions but it's about adjusting your mind to think like the test writers okay so i shouldn't really be focusing my time on reading these books like i've just been i've got this one textbook that's like over a thousand pages and yeah. i just want to get through it and maybe i could just kind of skim through like the headlines i would do the graphs the pictures and the headlines mm -hmm. and i would um i would look at it before i go to bed and as soon as i wake up in the morning okay the pictures and the graphs and then the rest of the time the rest of the six weeks just focus on questions and answers questions and answers Janice, you know enough. Really? Yeah. Yeah, my personality type is like, I overstudy, overstudy. Right, so that overstudying can be an obstacle. Yeah, because I could read into the question too much. You can read into the question too much, so you've got to do the wrong answers. It's, and again, this is, we have not talked about your overstudying. All of the stuff, you know it's coming from divine source to say just focus on the questions for six weeks and okay. get the wrong answers and then um offer to go over the 20 questions you already know are on the test with people okay. i'm starting a list of questions from people questions and answers from people that already took the test if you want a last minute study partner to go over the questions I already know are on the test. Okay. You build your own bank and you start thinking like the um, the test takers. Yeah, I've got question. I've got questions, but I've got thousands and thousands of questions. So yeah. now just focus on a few in each category. Yes, and that that whole point of the ones that the people that already took the test mm -hmm. said this was on the test look for questions similar to that okay and then you test the people about to go in on those questions similar questions within your thousand bank questions okay and then um when they come out they may add to your question bank 10 great questions that you okay. go learn why the answers were wrong on your mock questions. Okay. Did that make sense? And that so, makes a lot of sense. Yes. This is what your body wants. This is what your mind wants. It will rest better becoming a questioner and an answerer. Okay. okay. So how many hours a day do you think I should study? How long is your test? How, the, uh, this first hardest one. It's two hours. It's a hundred so your your minimum amount that you want to sit in one sitting you want to train yourself to sit for two and a half hours okay still without taking a break okay and you want to do a minimum of that um twice a day so like two and a half hours in the morning of just sitting and taking the test and answering like why it was wrong, not getting up from your seat, building your focus. It's a big deal for you to be focused. Okay. Yeah, I feel kind of scattered right now. Yeah, so two and a half hour spurts. So that, because in your nervousness of going to take the test, you want to have stamina already to mm -hmm. sit still for, more time than the test takes. Okay. Okay. Yay, Janice. Good Yay. Luck. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I, you're going to get lucky. So it's a lucky time. I have a feeling. Yeah, it is. Oh, beautiful. I think it says Steffi. Is Steffi, do you have a question? 
Hi, yes, I have a question. Yes. Hi, Steffi. What can I do for you? Hi, I was just wondering what you see for my if I'm gonna have some financial luck. So uh, tell me about housing, because housing seems Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hi there. Hi, Steffi, I can hear you, and this will be recorded so you can hear it hopefully later. Steffi, what's happening with you and housing? Well, where I've lived where I've lived for um, since 1986, and it's rented, and it, my rent's going up, and I live in a very expensive market, and now I'm all alone. Um, the people I lived with have passed away, and I have to find another place to live, and um, it's a very tough market, and um, I was just wondering if you see any luck for me, or yeah, what, what you think will happen. So, um, uh, so that's, your field is talking about about um yes i do see luck for you i see you focused on becoming a caretaker of a property um and possibly bringing more people in to share with you that property but i would list all of your different skill sets and start looking for a unit that has someone that needs caretaking of their property okay i've never done that before right but you did a beautiful job where you live you have a beautiful well place. Uh, we have a care professional caretaker i live in a big complex with a caretaker right and i mean on the inside oh okay Right? This is something that would be really useful for someone else. And would you, you're um, looking for a position for caring and nurturing. It's something that you've developed in yourself to help other people become um, a little bit better and healthier. It's you've been focused on stuff like that, and and I say caretaking of a property, but it's really like the being able to handle the little details. Okay, and um, listing it as that winds up making companionship, friendship, um, housing that you can afford the whole nine yards and the places that i would start listing it is with people that you know that are um if you say gosh i'm i'm really looking to move in with someone that would love someone to take care of the space in exchange for rent or lowered rent because i really like living with people Did that make sense? Well, now I'm thinking I'd like to live alone. <laughs> A little privacy. Yeah, and I think um, the, the difficult part is you just have to get through this transition. You've got to create a little bit more financially. Right. To, um, and so the, and the move is imminent. And so it will give you time to, and living with someone else will give you time to kind of um, have new ideas pop in. Right. And so the move is imminent. The, um, so starting this way, it's a stepping stone to remaking yourself and what you're uh, um, creative at doing for resources. Right. Do you think I will be financially lucky? I think you're financially, you are, you always have been. If you really, really think about it, you, where you live 
and what you have and how you've done that has been semi-retired for a number of years. Right. And um, no one else gets to do that and live the way you get to live. Right. You've been really lucky. And so yes, the luck continues, but really making this plan of movement into housing, into remaking yourself and laughing. Right. A new group of people, a new group of friends, a new um, freshness to uh, being a companion, a caretaker for someone. Okay. Um, and do you see me getting a good job other than like caretaking, but you know, where I can I travel or in the process of reinventing yourself. This is true. You've got to figure out what you really want to do. The traveling does come in, but that's not something you enjoy doing necessarily for work. Okay. All right, Steffi, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Amy. Hi. Yay, I'm so glad that you popped on. What can we answer for you? Well, 2018, I had a lot of loss and a lot of struggle, and I worked hard um, as a long-term substitute teacher, um, you know, to make a difference. And I think the most struggling I had was finding clarity for my soul path and how to use my gifts and love and um, I'm just after I lost my best friend and lover something shifted in me where like I I want the very highest good for myself and my children and so I've been working on that but I'm in a precipice of hope and faith and survival. So I was, I think I was called to you. You know, I feel like I've been misled by other spiritual advisors and um, I'm looking forward to a brighter 2019. And I guess my question would be what, can I look to <laughs> for 2019? Uh, it's um, interesting because for you, what's coming in is ceremony. Like doing more, you have more ceremony to do for your beloved friend that passed. And you're uh, like, there's, when there's more ceremony. And it's interesting because it feels like you need to eat directly off the earth, um, like fruit trees. And um, you've got to be and go pick the fruit and eat it. Um, it's an interesting sort of like not hiking, but maybe strawberry picking or whatever is season. I'm not sure why there's feedback. Um, let me purely, yeah, I play when I talk online for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. It comes up. So when I talk, I will mute you and then I'll unmute you for one. Okay. For, does that sound good? And so you won't have to mute it. It'll just be um, in between. So there we go. Let's see if it works. So it doesn't even want to move around. <laughs> there we go for a second. This is so important because there is something about when you get um, connected to your food source, there's something that happens in your body that shifts. You go through things so deeply. You go back to the source. You're connected at the root to so many things and you've been uprooted so there's this um, energy of needing or requiring to do more ceremony 
And it's interesting to say, if it's meeting the farmer, that might be a good thing as well. But it's so, so important to bring this in. So let me unmute you. And let me say, let me close the door and see if that um, yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Of, I mean, eating food and meeting the farmer. I mean, I'm very... When you were young, where did you live? When you were a kid, where did you live? I lived in Saratoga, California, in suburbia. Um, and when I lived in middle school, we moved to Santa Rosa and we had a ranch. And you had, a and I had, a, and I was very connected to the earth. Yeah, and that's what's been called back in. Really beautiful. This energy of and um, the being at a ranch, being connected to the earth, doing a retreat during during doing ceremony, and what the girls are doing in Cancun or just going out to Ruth's ranch would be another really good option to ground in, to do the ceremony, to complete what you're here to do. And it's your love, your best friend left. Um, you're, you're still needed, Amy. You're still very, very needed. They would not have chosen to left, leave you. And they just told me I never left. She feels me all the time. I'm on her heart all the time. That's that heaviness. I know it. <laughs> and it's... Um affecting I think it's affecting in, in a good way in that um I am just bluffing off things that don't serve my highest good uh, but he can't be here to be my love partner so I'm trying to move on and the men that have come in my energy are not worthy so he says you're idealizing him he was a little rough too around the edges he's like i was a little rough around the edges babe he has some cute little nicknames for you mermaid mermaid he says i was rough around the edges and then he's showing me his hand which sometimes means it got a little rough at times, early in the beginning. Huh. His hands were very healing. <laughs> and he says, um, he's showing me his hands and he says, you helped him become him. He was so rough and you helped him become him. So these other guys and these other, the, you remember the finished product that you had a hand in creating is what that also means to me. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I, what, there was two recent ones and one, I didn't like the way that they treated animals and the way that they talked to me and I just felt that I wasn't going to go down that path because I'm a single mom and I have children yeah and I don't think, I don't think they were right those two guys weren't right and he right. Is, um so he's shown up in various ways you're um so tell me about bell chimes chimes um, I don't know. Oh, you know, I was wondering if the bell, the chiming on your video, that's interesting. 
um, even in my ears, because I think I have a, um, what do you call that when it's, is it clear essence or whatever? Clear. I hear, yes. I hear that in my ears. I just don't understand it yet. So, um, um, it's, so he's communicating with you. He's the gatekeeper to help you wake up more of your senses. It's interesting because you do need to physically move, dance, turn on music. And it's so funny. I hear kind of like country music or um, that would be really helpful for you. Okay. Um, so he that, was, that's him okay. chiming in, trying to get your attention. That's funny because he is a musical artist. So that's so um, Yeah but reggae and I, ha I had to turn off his music because it was so heartbreaking to hear him. So that's um, probably why it's coming on country. You need to hear music, maybe not his right. Um, right. So, and it's so funny and the movement, you've got to bring the movement and the bells are him communicating with you. There is someone wonderful that's coming. Um, but right now you've got to do ceremony to really, really know that your job is not done here. There's, there's an aspect to you that is going to work on helping, um, I don't know if it's older people transition and communicate or if it's other wives and lovers be able to, and you guys, like the feeling of really being, this was such a soul connection, multiple lifetimes worth of marriage. Yeah, I think right now that weighs on me, but not as much as my financial stability and, and embarking on teaching. I'm waiting to find out if I'm going to get a full-time position doing that. Like, I think that there's so many things that I'm supposed to do. So, I feel. Uh, number one, ceremony. Go back, watch the video. As soon as it comes out, do the ceremonies that you remember that you heard. Write a eulogy for yourself today. Write that eulogy for the future self. Your kids writing that eulogy. Um, write the bliss list, really, really go in and, and definitely the biggest one for you with the movement and music to really do uh, the music and movement, taking the bath and then going back into doing music and movement and then going back and listening to the, um, the guided meditation, really important. Okay. And then yeah, I have a, a lot of work to do. <laughs> if you can put it on a credit card, and I say this, at $1,000, you get each of the teachers, you get all of these classes, all of these people, and all of this healing work, communication, there'll be someone with you every day almost, raising your vibration, right? And so by the end of January, the job comes in. Energy matches, like attracts like. Your energy coming up and what you, gifts you're here to give get created. And so I, I probably would like to do that, but that's where I'm at. I'm at a place of survival. Um, yeah. And I, I want to. I mean, I absolutely understand the shift and, you know, I'm working to do things that can help me get to that place where I can do that. I, I totally see the value in yeah. that, but I have to pay bills. Right. And, and, you know. and that road, the $10 a month, the Academy, if you're within the Academy, Miracle Makers Academy is $10 a month and it was designed. Okay. For you to be able to jump in the lifetime membership just gets a bunch of bonuses but that'll be there when you're ready for it to get the bonuses okay. 
So jump in at the $10. If you go to miraclemakersacademy.com, it's $10 a month. And there's all of these resources online. And so many of the people, um, they weren't the people that you're hearing from. There's a few people that were online that started at 10 and moved through to be able to contribute more to the world projects that we're working on. Yeah, I, I feel really drawn to that. Um, you know, I, I do so many things, photography, um, music of photography, and I've done a lot of things. This is not my first rodeo as far as yeah, careers, true. but um, I would like to contribute um, in a humanitarian way. That's always been, you know, down in my soul, what I would like. $10 a month um, makes a huge difference for someone in Egypt, in Pakistan, and, you know, that $10 a month, and it accumulates and continues to give back, and it's a way, it gives tenfold. So my clients try and pay me more than, you know, my highest client is $150,000 a year to work with me. My, um, there are clients that come in on the radio as often as I'm on the radio, they show up and they get the downloads or the readings whenever on the radio. So free to 150,000 and people try and pay me more because it gives back tenfold when you're with nature with, and you can give it to a tree, you can give it to whatever brings you joy and sort of moving that the living energy that's inside that tree forward so miracle makers is a good place to start for you amy okay well we'll see you thank you Bert. you're so welcome and it's this is recorded so you can go back and listen to it for yourself and take notes and it'll take a couple of days but it'll be up there for you okay well thank you very much i sure appreciate it you're so welcome. Bye for now. Bye bye. So, Susie, let's try again, sweetheart. Hi. I also, if um, I'm going to unmute Rose as well. Susie, I think you're unmuted on. Oops. If I can move, I think Andrea has her hand up. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Hi. Hi, Dr. Sarah. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. How are you? Did I, I didn't know if you saw me up there. That's why I, oh, I raised so my glad hand. You're here. What can I answer for you? Um. Well, I'm glad I dialed in. I've been seeing 1111 for weeks now. So when I got your email. Um, I thought I this was this was good. This is really enlightening, and I'm going to do the um, <clears throat> the eulogy tonight, especially because I need to eulogize my old cancer self. Um, you and I talked about my do cancer diagnosis uh, earlier in the summer, and since then, I found out after the operation that the the tumor is benign. So. Um, it was removed. So I'm happy about that. Um, 2019, I just wanted to know if you saw anything on, on progress on uh, career, job, job search. I'm, I've been looking for a job. And so your guides are saying go down by the ocean. Go apply down by the ocean. What does that mean to you? Um, <laughs> well, I, it, it could. Be, I want to move back east, east coast, uh, and which is where I'm from. And I, I am looking in the primarily in the DMV, Maryland area. Um, waiting for uh, an opportunity out of New Hampshire that may take me to the DC area. Um, I missed out on an opportunity in Florida because I overstated my my salary range. <laughs> so 
<laughs> so that was an oopsie, oopsie daisy. Um, that, that was just three months ago. So I didn't. So I do get see that. getting a new job and focus on the places with water. Like DC has the Potomac River. Um, so if there's a job that's on the river, it's like, it's an easy yes. It's focus on the East Coast ocean and the Florida position being able to write back to them and state you did you knocked it out of the ballpark and being able to state wow whatever it is that you guys are i believe in your company and so i whatever it is that you guys are whatever the position is i'm happy to come in and consult mm -hmm. and start by consulting Okay. And so whatever the salary was for the year, put it to a third of that to consult with the company in Florida. Okay. And um, I know it was three months ago, but they might be looking for someone who's um, ballsy, pardon my French but um able to really come in and gutsy and that's one of the things that it'll demonstrate is your gutsy yeah i think they thought of me as much as as that <laughs> but yeah. i someone else got the position who under under um stated their salary requirements and he's there now but and that's fine on forward march i mean i'm looking on, forward. but this is so design a consulting page on a website and then offer it to that company okay. at a third uh, you know like um, a, a third of what you listed for a third of the time so it's sort of like let me come in and consult with you guys these are the high level promises that I make okay. and to offer what you would have done there to other companies as well. Mm -hmm. So not only do you fill out job resumes, but you also are a consultant. Okay. Okay. Do you see a move for me soon? I, do. I, I don't, I see it. Um, it's interesting because I feel like there it's, it, um, it's a partial move. And what that means is there's something that calls you back often. Mm -hmm. So would your kids be able to go with you? No, I, I don't have children. I'm free as a bird. You're free I, as the bird. What, um, so do you have doggies? No, no dependents. No dependents. It's so interesting because I see an energy of, um, like a little bit younger people calling you back. Yeah, they, they would be back east. They would be back east. Okay. But then they're my nieces and nephews. Your nieces and nephews. Like I feel that you have a calling to be with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's where it's at. That's where the position and that's where. And um, so being a consultant plus applying for jobs lets you move sooner than later. Okay, anything on the love area? No. Um, I'm checking, it's so interesting because um, your feet are saying she hasn't been doing much. Your body's saying there's little things that you did but you turned down invites even recently. Yeah. So it's gonna be hard for love to find you that way. So you've got to get your feet on the ground and moving and um, you're physically being in proximity is important for you for relationship. In other words, there's a chemical reaction that happens within a person 
that causes them to want to be with you. Okay. <laughs> So yay. So the answer is yes. It's okay. there, but you got to get out. Okay. Yay. Thank you. You're Thank you. welcome. Let's see. I would love for anyone to raise their hand. I think that might be a great way. Just like, um, and I think we got Rose. Hi, Rose. Hi, love. You're unmuted. Can you hear me? Thank you for all you're doing, honey. I appreciate you so much. Oh, let's see. Oh, some more hands went up. Aaron's hand and Kathleen. Um, Rose, I'll mute you again and we'll go to Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Oh, hi. Hi, love. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, fantastic. What can I answer for you? So I absolutely love Dr. Marga's question. <laughs> so like when she said that, I was like, yes, that's the question. <laughs> and so I would love for you to state it for yourself. So I make sure so, I... Yeah, of course. I would like to know what's the most important things to focus on for 2019 for me, myself. So the most important thing, like, um, and I love that you restated it because I can see how the threads between um, Dr. Marga and um, Mary Beth were getting crossed because she said, just repeat the question. So there was this thing, mm -hmm. the reason that I'm sharing that with you is it's so important for you to hear this. Your soul needs you and the energy to focus on is it's not your fault. It's so funny because you're clearing yourself of so much trauma where everything felt like it was your fault. So you've got to repeat, especially between now and the full moon, none of this is my fault. It's not my fault. Okay. <laughs> Your soul needs you. Um, and that really is so important for you to fully embody and get. Um, and the other thing it's saying is there's a few things that you started that you haven't finished the job with yet. Mm hmm so yeah. What does that mean? Oh, that's the story of my life. But <laughs> um, I there's a couple of things like I've been I've been helping Ruth is one of the things that I'm um, I'm finishing. I need to finish and follow through with in the next couple of weeks, actually. And then um, also just with my my own like with my, my own business in itself, I need to, I need to be reaching out and actually following through with some clients. So, um, so it's so beautiful because this year feels like it's last year ended with a big, big opening for you. And this one is really about synergizing all of the openings that have been happening for you. I sometimes feel like there's so many, I'm not sure which direction to go. <laughs> so um, it's so interesting because the part of making phone calls is huge for you. There's a lot of phone calls. So tell me about that. Oh dear. Um, I've worked in that, in that setting a lot, so I'm not sure. Okay. So this, this bit of the work that you do, can you describe that from home? You're consulting your business. Um, I do energy work. 
and then I've also helped with like filling events for other people. So I want you to look and um, list those two things. I want you to list, I, um, and again, sort of like, uh, um, uh, and this is the path of quickest abundance for you. Okay. Is if you list, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram, that I fill your events. And um, you have, and I, um, the calling people, double checking, making sure their payments, all of the tasks that you are not ready to handle, I will call your list and get them to your event and get them to go to your website. And um, so task by task, item by item, listing that on a physical page, and then mm -hmm. calling up the, the teachers or the leaders that you want to, um, want to see their classes or participate with, the ones that you would believe in. So, the, so, like, um, I probably, my kids would probably feel, my kids like shooting guns, and I think it's important for everybody to know gun safety, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't fill a NRA event, right? That's not something <laughs> I would do. Right, okay. So it would, I would not call them up ever and offer, but any, like, um, political movement that I believe in and um, you do two things on that page is you list yourself as an energy healer and so I deliver good energy I am um, one of my gifts is getting a yes and feeling the areas that your body requires that yes Okay. So but both of those on one page and when you talk to someone, you, you say, listen, I'm going to, I love, so um, you're working with Ruth and with maybe filling it for Cancun. You say, Ruth, give me your list. I will call them. And you send Ruth a copy of your website page. And then you follow up and call back and say, oh, did you have a chance to read my page? And okay. you say, and um, I'm so happy to get started. You can email me messy. You can take pictures of the numbers for me to call or a list. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And, and then you, you give the rate. Okay. And, um, as they're reading the page, they say, oh, and you do energy work? And you say, yes. And that's why I'm so effective at getting a yes. And then you also add in there that if you wanted, if it's, again, only if you want to go there, you can say, I will come be your energy healer for this event. I've already done it for, and you did it for me at 5D event, right? You did it for Ruth at 5D. I've already done it for these people at these gatherings. Awesome. Thank you. That's where I've actually really felt, um, like I went back to LA again and did the female entrepreneur event and I helped them as well. And I absolutely, I found, I found such joy in doing that. So that's, that's awesome. so beautiful. And I can't wait till April. <laughs> So lovely. I'm so glad. Erin, congratulations. Thank you. You're so welcome. Yay. Big hugs to you. Thank you. All right. I love you. Love you Bye for now. Yay. I think Kathleen, your hand is up. Hi, love. So I must have picked the other one. You're still, you're unmuted. Here, let's unmute here. 
So you're unmuted. Just try Am I, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, hi. hi. Um, I'm sorry I missed the webinar. I wasn't home, so I'll have to wait for the replay. But I just want to know what you see for me, Dr. Sarah, in 2019. I would love for you to, um, I think some days it's really hard for you to go out. And today was one of those days. It was hard to be out and about. Right, but I did it. <laughs> and you did it. And it's so good. And I think there's like a, um, there's, so what I see happening is, there's a layer of sadness that's coming off of you this year. And I see um, a great deal of self forgiveness. Um, and that huge, um, it's really funny that the other thing that I see is I see you celebrating, like really celebrating. And, oh, good. And inviting people over and having and participating in group gatherings and activities. Oh, good. I could use that. Yeah. And the, the thing that your body is asking for is more outing. It sounds okay. funny because it's so... But it, it so wants to, uh, and it might be something like going to the mall early in the morning and walking in circles around the mall. Okay. Um, and there's, there's a lot of um, things that your body wants to let go of. Like you let go of the thought, you let go of the emotion, but it's still stuck in your body. So how do I get rid of it? You have to go walking. Oh, well, walking will get rid of it. The walking will get rid of it. As you're walking, you'll be like, oh yeah, I healed that a long time ago. I wonder why it's coming up. And then you're like, oh, it was stuck in my body. So it's basically all about shedding the layers, like an onion. Like an onion. Like I'm an onion. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything for work? Do you see anything for me? Um, so uh, this sounds funny. <laughs> to say, but the, it comes across as, um, uh, were you helping people in their home before? In their home? In their home. No. So it feels like a friend or someone you know or a family member needs help in their home. Maybe my mom? Yeah, and that that's the first layer of work that came through. My mom. Your mom. She has the, the beginnings of, I think, dementia. And so a lot of cities let you become a caregiver and get paid for helping family. You oh. take like a CPR course, you take um, a 12 hour training sometimes, and then the city pays you rather than sending over. Uh, and so I would, I think um, most cities, it's either 311 or 411. Yeah. Get information with around that. So you think I'll be taking care of my mom? Is that it? I'm being paid for it possibly by the city. Just another quick question. I'll let you go. Um, I can't get rid of this cough and sore throat is coming back again and I'm losing my voice again. It's now a very long time. It's like 25 days. I had the flu. I got uh, getting over the flu. With, I had the flu when Bear died. Yeah. And, and uh, <coughs> I can't get rid of it. It's interesting because I thought this yesterday or the, after the last time that we talked about your German, possibly getting the German Shepherd. Oh, I have to tell you uh, about that. Yeah. On the way home, there was this thought of the energy needs to be cleaned from there. And that's why there's a disconnect. 
and it oh. might be getting uh, um, it might be getting the German Shepherd, but it, there needs to be an energy clear. Yeah, because you know what? I could, his. I'm staring at his big, huge bed, Doctor Sarah. I yeah. didn't get rid of it, and I didn't get rid of any of his toys. And and so, Kathleen, there is infection in your house. Oh my God! And so you need to get rid of all of that stuff, even his toys. Um, and I would say, especially before bringing in a new dog, it's you've got to get rid of it. You've got that's oh. why if if like the time difference mm -hmm. would make a difference. But if you think back to um, what was oozing from his leg, sort of, yeah. all, it was everywhere, and so. That was okay. your reason for saying no to the puppy. No to the um, puppy. So if I get rid of, so that means his toys too? His everything. Toys too, everything. And then have the house cleaned, is what you said? So, um, so, and this is, you've got to, you've got to sanitize a lot of the area that he was in. He was in the whole house. Yeah. And so that's, before you bring, and again, this is healing for you. The right. movement, every time you miss him, go clean up something. I do. Um, the, my end room where I was doing readings is a rug in there. And I, he used to sometimes walk in there, and I didn't know if I have to get rid of my throw rug in that room. And so it's interesting that um, uh, that that comes up. It's not somewhere he usually would be, but he did shed on it. So I have to get rid of the rug. I, I would say you would feel better. Okay, so basically get rid of everything and clean the house. Yes. Okay. Can you tell me how to get rid of my cough and my sweat rug? Saliva, so put saliva in your belly button. Yeah, you um, told me to do that one. Yeah, and it works. You want to do it six times a day. You want to wash <laughs> your hands afterwards. Right. And the, the belly button, inside the belly button, the actual belly button, the skin from there delivers information directly to the spleen. And the spleen is what makes our antibodies. Okay. Like, if you do this first thing in the morning, if you do this because you haven't had, like, before you drink a glass of water, you're like, <laughs> and then this is what your throat is telling me. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. Okay. Um, but you have to wrap it. The reason that you're coughing now is because yeah. you're without wrapping. And, and oh, I don't know. Your okay, wrap. Throat, you want to like really, really wrap your throat. Okay. Like in the house too? Um, and in the house especially. Oh, okay. Wrap so it. Wrap it. And what does that so, do? So, the re so this is like, I thick how you did that. it's up against my thyroid. It's falling on my thighs. Yes. So I can, it's keeping this part of my body hot and humidified. Oh. And so this, the enzymes, everything works better here to get rid and take care of my lungs and my throat. Okay, so do I keep my humidifier in the bedroom on at night or no? So um, at this point, when I sleep, you need it. You need it. I need it. So I wrap my throat. Wrap your throat wrapped fully. At night too when I sleep? At night as well. Okay. All right. I love you. I love you too. Thank you. Now I have to go and get rid of everything. And that gave me a push, Dr. Sarah, to get yeah. rid of his bed. It's right in my bedroom. So maybe that's not good either. No, you're breathing all of that in. Oh. All right, uh, honey. Um, wrap your neck. I'm, I wrapped mine. I'm not even the I like how you did up. that. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's like it's so important for you to wrap it. It will you will stop coughing. <coughs> so, as much. so go do it right now. So this puppy, my husband is like he says I should get this puppy. 
Yeah, and if, if it's really, really that strong, get rid of everything, sanitize I'm gonna do house. that. I will do so, everything. Right, if you didn't do that, it would take about four years. For Holy every, crap. right, it would have taken that long for the all the germs, everything so to So I'm be gonna throw out. everything away and call somebody in to clean the house. Yes. From top to bottom. Yes. Get rid of the rug in the end, get rid of the throw rug in my yes. office. Okay, got it. I'm going to wrap my throat. Okay, awesome. Bye for now. Thank you. I well, can't wait for the replay. Thank you. Bye. You're bye. so welcome. Bye bye. <coughs> Yay, Rose. How are Hello. you? Let's try that again. Hi, Rose. Hi. All right. Let's try, um, I think we've got Lori, darling. How are you? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm so glad you're here. Well, it's always good to be here. I appreciate uh, all the work you're putting in this afternoon. But, um, um, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes I notice, and it's not a surprise to me, because I think it's kind of a lifelong self-judgment about, like, uh, achievement and sometimes I feel like okay well there's this like status or hierarchy based on who's a doctor who's written books and I really feel like a lot of doing and accomplishment is not necessarily about loving you know what I mean and I feel like in this lifetime my agenda has been I mean I feel like in my own right that I've pursued, you know, education and psychology, philosophy, spirituality, trying to figure out why I wasn't comfortable in my own skin and trying to get a, a heart connection and find my way to my heart. And I feel like um, since the passing, since this last year has been so difficult with these losses, of my dad, my brother, my colleague in such a short time, I feel like I'm really having more awareness of my heart, more awareness of um, my heart center and energy. And I feel like this is my light. This is my, this is where the people that I love live. And I feel like this is the most important thing to me right now, as far as this is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've been waiting to give birth to within myself, this inner awareness of my light, my sacred heart. And um, I don't quite understand the sensations, but I know it's beautiful and I, I want more of it. And I feel like it's, it is related to my dad and my brother. You know what I mean? I feel like, I don't know if it's them energetically or if it's just my soul. You know, in a breath work many years ago, it came to me that the heart is the umbilical cord to the soul. And so I'm like, well, this is my light. This is my light. This is, you know, this is what my whole journey has been about. How to, how to feel this because I could never say honestly with my, that I could feel love, the emotion of love. And this isn't really an emotion. It's, I think it's, it's love, it's energy, it's light, it's warmth. And it's amazing. And yet, you know, it kind of flickers. It's not all the time. Like I'm feeling it real heavy right now. And, you know, this is what I feel I have to bring to the table to help others get in tune with this, you know, I mean. It's so um, amazing that if your soul is communicating, it's been in what it's calling itself um, a ring of fire. Like it's been on fire, a ring of fire around you. Every, you kind of got closed into yourself being surrounded by and putting out so many fires. And so you finally are getting to know yourself. 
and you've got something that no one else has got and you've got this level of calling it um, the gift of equalness like you help people feel equal Well, I love that because I do think that, you know, there's that quote, kindness is the highest form of wisdom. You know what yeah. I mean? And I do think that I'm, I'm kind and, and that people feel safe with me. And so uh, when was the last time, because every time you did it, and I'm putting this in quotes, a healing for your dad, you felt better. Every time you do, and that just means visited. Every time you visited your dad, every time you visited your mom, every um, healing you did healed you. Your, your brother, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all of that healed you. And so I would love for you to list, whether it's on Craigslist, whether it's on Meetup, whether it's in the local place that you offer for donation healings. You're really great at going and sitting with and bringing the kindness. Well, and, and that's the thing. I do feel that I have a lot to offer people. And I've had through the years, you know, people say to me that I've said just the right thing that helped them. And I know I have my own, my own gifts. It's just that I'm not really sure how to fine tune the articulation of, of it by way of, you know, definition. But I mean, I used to think it's being a self-love guru, helping people feel good about themselves, helping people embrace their imperfections as their perfection, helping people be shameless about their beingness, helping people know that they're good, bad, and darn right ugly is perfect just the way they are. You know what I mean? Yes. And so what you've got to do is list it, write it down. You've got to write down um, everything we just said here. You've got to write it down on paper, add a couple of pictures, and a phone number at the bottom. Okay. And go that... to the post office and um, share it with the postal clerk and go to the coffee shop and post it on the coffee shop wall and go to your, um, to the, uh, it feels like a local Toastmaster kind of chapter. It, it, I don't think it's Toastmaster, but it's a place where people get together and give talks. Okay, okay. Um, and so go there and bring, it's, it's easy to create this for you, for you to type it up, write it down, add a couple pictures, print it out, and bring it with you. Okay, or even just try and, and find a webmaster to, to put it up. Yes. You know, and I've been, because I have been a caretaker for the last three years, I'm, I'm kind of moving into an energy because I've been very lethargic as a result of, you know, the grieving process and coming to terms with loss. And, and I feel like I'm coming up, I'm coming up now, even though, you know, I'm still sad about my dad, yeah. but I'm, I'm coming up. And one of the things that I feel is inspiring me is all the Kali Club of America specialty shows um, are coming up and they're coming up quickly leading up to the biggest show for Kali breeders and fanciers, the National in, in Springfield, Illinois, which is geographically very compatible. And my mom wants to go. She says, if I'm still on the planet, I'll be there with you. And that's a big dream I have of sharing that and my my colleague he's looking pretty good he's he's young he's only two years old his name is Truman and and I just wonder if you see us there I and see you there I, I see a lot I think that's part of the reason for the flyer 
is you've got to build not only the website, but a physical thing. And as you're going out and training and getting all the supplies, um, this is a personal service. So it's not just about the Truman anymore. It's also you're the, the show dog. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that, but I'm just, I do believe in Truman. I don't think he's of the same, maybe. Right. And I, I usually want to clarify that. You are there. You are highlighting Truman. You guys are going together, you and your mom. But the real show dog, girl, the real show is you this time. And you've hidden before. And that's why you've got to print it out and you've got to write out what you offer. Okay, are you are you suggesting that maybe I handle Truman myself? I was gonna have him professionally handled. Have him professionally handled, but everywhere you go, you are part of the show. Oh, oh okay, because like it's a dream to share it with my mom, to be ringside, with my mom will be a forever memory. Yes. And so, like, do you think I should just release myself of whether he does well or not and just... Oh, absolutely. You got... The dream's already there. It's the dream to have your mom. And the dream that this time you're talking about your healing abilities. And Truman does what Truman does. Okay. 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 And like, do you think my dad, you mentioned pneumonia, you know, I know the lungs is grief and my dad had, you know, aspirated pneumonia and um, like, do you think he left the world because he was sad or it was just time? He was just ready. He was ready. He was ready uh, uh, almost two years ago, love. Yeah. Okay. So he um he hung out long enough to make sure you weren't alone when your brother transitioned when all the stuff that went down. He really was your man in so many ways. Okay, and he was like the solid sturdy um happy uh, that you showed up well i feel like i did heal like you said you know it was a circle i helped my parents but i also was healed by that precious amazing time that we had you yeah. know what I mean? and so now it's and again i can't wait for the recording to come out so you write this down and you really do this work Lori. i love you okay thank you so much as always thank you so much be good to yourself bye bye I think every, I think Mott's, um, I hope I say your name correctly. I'm sorry, Mott, M-O-T. Hi, you're unmuted. Thank you for being here. Let's see if we can turn your volume up or um, I'm not able to hear you. Thank you for being here. Rose, let's try again. Hi, Rose. Hi. Oh, I think I hear you. I just hear static. Okay. So, well, um, Susie. Hi, darling. It's so hi. hi. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. So yeah, I um, I I was in your class about six years ago. Oh, Susie, think... how could I forget you? I <laughs> forget you. Well, I had I know exactly uh, long... who you are, darling. Don't. Yeah, I love you so much. I love that you're here. Thank you. And um, at any rate, uh, I I was in California for six years and leading uh. Uh, workshops for homeless people and uh, I don't know just talking to a lot of homeless people on the streets and making art and poetry and I, I was I was being myself 
And then I had um, a, a back spasm in which I couldn't even stand up. And I, my son actually flew back to the East Coast with me, like holding my hand. Uh, because I was sleeping on foam, you know, I was doing my wild woman California thing. And here at age seven, zero, 70, uh, my son brought me home to my actual house and um, where I have an actual bed. So my spasm went away, but I think you can hear me crying because I, I have depressive brain chemistry and I didn't get depressed at all to speak of in the six years in California because I was walking three miles a day in the sunshine and I always spoke to people in my neighborhood even though I was living in one room. And now I'm in a house, my own house, and my friends have died, my good friends that I helped in their stage four cancers. And I'm just isolated and I have to do a lot of paperwork. I have to clear out this house I had a major depressive episode um, about seven or eight years ago, and I don't want to be on medication again. And I'm wondering if you think, I mean, I'm trying, you know, to walk every day, but it's gray and it's rainy and I don't know anyone. And I mean, I too, I helped my father in this house after a stroke. I mean, I've done everything I can. The question is, can I, I, can I just honor this intermittent crying and complete terror every day? I don't so want your body, to... um, So Susie, yeah. you can honor it. And your body is asking for, um, it's an interesting thing, but you're a highly sexual being. Yeah. Um, and the, when you can't get sunshine, on the outside, as a woman, you can take up other pursuits that will heal you from uh, making the sunshine on the inside. So do you, I've been like trying to make art and, and my usual art, you know, I've been in galleries and my poetry, I've been published, but is there something else I need to deal with a lot of my financial papers I, I need to get rid of? everything that, you know, from periods where people were dying and they died. I need to just get rid of actual physical So, uh, darling, I'm going to tell you, you need to get um, physically, uh, like, uh, massaged. You need to okay. get that massage in your body, on your body. And, and then you need to um, uh, imagine that you are not Susie Mesmer, but you are Susie Mesmer's caretaker. Oh, I, oh I, that's amazing that you said that because I was trying to pretend that I was my sister or my mother, yeah. but I, I like that very much, yeah. And uh, you've got to say, all right, for Susie, I'm gonna clear this little space. Right. And the first area that needs to be cleared in your life is clothing. Yes. Right. And, and so because that has become, you only need maybe 10 pants and shirts or sort of the, uh, um, combination, get rid of everything else. Yeah. And that so uh, this, um, so go get a massage. That's okay. connect and get it from someone that you love their energy, like you love their energy, and that physical touch will wake you back up. And um, we did this whole new moon thing, right? So uh, yeah, in uh, addition to doing the new moon ceremony and activation, so you've got to do that. And but I want you to go get a massage. Okay. And then when you come back, I want you to catch that you're not going to be in your house probably next, by the end of this year. You're going to be um, warm and island-like. I don't know if it's out of the country island, like 
Panama or Costa Rica, but um, which is not, a, they're not islands, but the, wow. it's the feeling of uh, island life for you. Well, what about California? I feel California or Hawaii, but I feel it like along the coast somewhere. Um, it's very much an island, like a, a bohemian life. Right. Bohemian, like the images that I'm getting is, it feels like you're, and I feel it's incredible because as an artist, you attract men like crazy. I know. <laughs> so getting this massage and the bohemian lifestyle thing might involve a man in his like summer cottage, winter cottage, meaning it might be <laughs> South America where it's, you know, when it's winter here, it's summer there. Right. And back and forth lifestyle. And do you think I need, I'm trying not to have medication because of the side effects. I mean, do you think so, I can just... Literally being a massage and then deciding to step out of your body yeah. fuels the depression. Okay, thanks. So and... that means like on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, maybe even um, having uh, this... And you got to catch and put some art up that demonstrates bohemian island life. So your body will wake back up to that. Okay. And what about getting myself to, to deal with financial papers, you know, related to dead parents and all that stuff, you know? Um, and so this, this, clothing thing is going to make a huge difference okay you're going to feel such a sense of relief with clothing that it's going to naturally transition into the paperwork oh and okay. again, um Susie, i would love for you to join miracle makers at the because there's and i know you've seen the work i know you've yeah. been in this world for a long time <laughs> it, would, it would make such a major difference for you to get all the bonuses and to get all of these things that you can't get anywhere else in this combination. Right. And then ongoing support going forward. Yeah, I think I have to start at the lowest level for now. Yeah, and if you start, it's beautiful to start at the lowest level as well, but to really, because it's a group thing. Uh -huh. so whatever the group does it elevates the group so it's a beautiful gift that you give yourself okay well thank you for that You're so welcome i love you i'm so glad <laughs> you're back well looking thanks, forward um. to um and i love your stories your crazy wonderful mad well. stories of <laughs> living and you know with the art on the street and being chased a, a few different times and the weird yeah. neighbors so of course i remember you love well and all I thank the amazing healing work that you did with the homeless that was thank incredible you. well it was it was mostly healing for me i would say i mean that's those are some of the people that i miss the most because there was never one homeless person that betrayed me and there yeah. were, you know, middle class and rich people that were unfortunately not, you know, who I thought they were. So yeah. I just feel that, um, that, I mean, I'm still, you know, communicating with some homeless people from California. Isn't and, that extraordinary? The gift yeah. that you've given yourself, the so, real, like, um, and in this class, we really talked about you know, it's the deepness of a person, how important it is to be understood from the depths. Yeah, well, I will, I'll just say that I felt more understood by some people like sleeping in the streets than I did by people that had my same sort of, you know, middle class details, you know, master's degree, art gallery, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I'll just say uh, one thing, three different policemen warned me against a certain um, man that was diagnosed as schizophrenic. 
but he was the only one that could tell my mood, like just walking down the street. If he saw me, he would just go high tide, low tide, you know, like the ocean. Yeah. And it was completely poetic. And even though the police kept arresting him, he never yeah. did never did anything dangerous to me. So yeah. I guess there's healing everywhere. I, I just want to thank you and uh, I'll go. Uh, seek a massage. Thanks a lot for remembering me. You're so welcome, love. Thank Thanks. you for being here. Bye for, right. Bye for now. Uh, Mat Mat. Is it Mat Mat? Uh, and I think Rose, my darling, hopefully we'll be able to get you to... Hi. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being on this call. I love everything that we've been able to create today. And today we went through so much of the wisdom for the new moon. And we went in and we talked about all of the activations and all of the ceremonies, a eulogy for your past, a eulogy from the perspective of the people that love you the most and uh, the eulogy for what you're become, what you have become. So for me, that was that 3000 year old being that has been able to do and connect with all the generations and really, but one of the aspects was the connecting India, Pakistan, Nepal, and Bangladesh, being able to really help um, America as well recognized itself completely back into the native traits, which was really, really beautiful. That's what was written in my future eulogy. Then the, the part of really getting clear on what brings you happiness then going in and creating music and dance then going in and doing a ritual bathing, um, this amazing bath, then coming back out and dancing again, the rebirth, the emergence, the baptism, born again, full of life with the moon, with God, with spirit as your guide, and then really, really living from that space moving forward, listening to the guided meditation um, for that to come in and initiate again. Then we dive, we dove so much into all the people that are part of the miracle makers and talked about joining at the lifetime membership and all of the healing that you receive from everyone all of the different people, all of the different groups, the opportunity to go to Cancun um, with the group of miracle makers there and all the extended things that we're going to be doing this year, pretty much someone to be on with every day of the week, all throughout the month to support you on your journey. Then this third, the third act of really going in and offering and receiving clear guidance. I'm so grateful to be able to do this. I look forward to next time. Please let me know if you will write down what came, what was useful, what helped you the most. Is my goal is to have um, five thousand members of miracle makers. So I'm really looking to spread the word because we can help so many people. And the the work just, can you imagine a world where we're living for each other? And these are the type of conversations that we're having. And it's easy, it's easy anywhere you are, that miracle frequency is turned on. So whether you come in at the 10th, $10 a month, whether you come in at the $1,000 for the lifetime membership, or whether you're at the $150,000 level, what's being done with that is we're building hospitals, we're educating people, we're bringing in and helping the homeless um, in 
the beautiful, it, there's a little bit of video on Facebook from all the work we did on Thanksgiving with the homeless. There's a little bit on Facebook for what we did for Christmas and what we're continuing to do for the Armenian Christmas here. It comes from my heart. There's no other thing that I would rather be doing than doing this. So thank you for making it possible. And whatever level you can come in on, we love to give back and co-create. Um, it comes back tenfold. So thank you so much. Love you. We will see you again soon within the Academy. Bye for now.